All Things Must Pass, The Rise and Fall of Tower Records. It's a documentary about the rise and fall of Tower Records. It was a record store that started uh, out west and eventually moved to the east coast in the U.S. and kind of spread all over the world. It was done as a labor of love by Colin Hanks, uh, Tom Hanks's son. It took him like six or eight years to put this together. And it is fascinating. It's a really in-depth look at everything that went into Tower Records coming together and then their ultimate demise. And what you think was the cause of their downfall was not. I mean, initially going in, I thought it was um, like iTunes and Napster and whatnot that put him out of business. But uh, it was something else entirely. It was all about Russ Solomon, who he worked for his dad, who owned a pharmacy, and he started selling 45s out of the pharmacy. And he bought the building next door from his father and started selling records out of there specifically and kind of blew up from there. It was an amazing story about this guy who had really good ideas, and he surrounded himself with a lot of hippies <laughs> who built this gigantic company from nothing, essentially. The story was hilarious because it was taking off in the 60s and he had all these little anecdotal tales and uh, just hilarious moments within the company's history. Your enjoyment of this is going to come down to if you're familiar with Tower Records. I love the place because here was this record store that was open till midnight. I discovered a ton of new music there. Actually, if you're a fan of Empire Records, the movie Empire Records was loosely based off of Tower Records. The author of the screenplay used to work at a Tower Records and more or less put her experiences down and they made the movie out of that. So if you went to Tower Records, you could go and listen to different music and like i said i discovered so much good music just rummaging through and hey i like that cover let me go listen to it hey look at this this is awesome back in the days before itunes and before you could uh, easily get your music and radio stations weren't playing music that i cared about so i had to find uh, stuff that i wanted to listen to another way they were overwhelmingly successful for years because they were a one of a kind you could go to a lot of record stores but they were always these little tiny places and mostly they just had top 40 garbage and you went into a tower records and they'd have this huge death metal section or you'd go and they would have a section which is weird music the documentary unfolds like most documentaries do there's a lot of archival footage there's talking head interviews for the interviews alone they talk to so many people who uh, their lives were affected by tower records how uh, apparently elton john used to go there like every month Monday or something to the one store and would uh, pick out a ton of new music. They talked to uh, Dave Grohl. They talked to Chuck D. A lot of big people in the music industry and show that uh, Tower Records, it wasn't just another record store. This was a very special record store. If you're a child of the 80s and you miss hanging out in record stores, you might want to give this one a look. Uh, it's a great trip down memory lane and you can see how somebody can take a good idea and and completely screw it up. Evidently, there was some other screw-ups in there that uh, they didn't cover in the documentary for whatever reason. So what happened to the company wasn't quite as cut and dry as they made it look in the documentary. What I recommend is if you are interested in the subject, uh, watch the documentary, and then afterwards go and read up a little bit more about it and find some additional stuff, which will give you a bigger picture of what the story really was. I don't know why they left that stuff out. I guess the fate of the stores ended up the same either way. So I guess maybe in the interest of time, they did go into it. But uh, I don't know, whatever. All Things Must Pass is a good documentary. Uh, it'll probably have a little more weight if you're over 30 and used to shop at Tower. Uh, even though Tower was a corporate entity that had uh, locations all over the world, it still had this small charm to it. Like the people that worked there, they loved music and they loved working there. And most of the time, as was shown in the documentary, if you got a job there, you didn't want to leave because it was fun. It wasn't a job. It was you went in and talked about music and you talked to other people who loved music. And that was great. It more or less showed how people just kind of stumbled into doing something that they loved the other thing was it showed how much of a forward thinker the guy was the guy made a lot of very smart decisions and he seemed like a genuinely good-hearted person if you're a fan of music and documentaries this is a really good one